At the end of last year, we visited Dr Jim Walker, who, along with his colleagues at Plant and Food Research and Hawke's Bay Apple business Apollo Apples, had successfully trialled a method to disrupt the mating behaviour of a number of moth species that are a real problem for apple growers. Twist ties were impregnated with pheromones and then attached to apple trees. The result has been a 70% reduction in insecticide spraying, little or no fruit damage and no residue problems. Now the work has been taken a stage further. Jim Walker explains. In the apple industry, particularly over, say, the last 10, 12 years, we've taken some big steps away from broad-spectrum insecticide use and got a lot more what we call IPM, Integrated Pest Management Systems, in place. And now, of course, the industry has an integrated fruit production program that maximises uh, biological control. Pheromones, uh, they've been a big part of the development there. When we talk about pheromones, we're talking about sex pheromones that insects produces. Uh, the female insect produces a sex pheromone to attract the male insect in for mating. So in the first instance, uh, we developed those into monitoring systems, which were very important for us to make informed control decisions. And now increasingly, we're turning those into control systems. We're actually using the pheromones against the communication, to disrupt the communication. This is a whole population effect. So we see the population simply because of male confusion, unable to locate females progressively, over time, the population goes rapidly lower because we're not getting mating, so we're not getting that recruitment to the next generation of the moth pests. What's pushed this whole concept along is the need for us to be pesticide residue free in certain of our markets, in particular the European market where there's a strong focus on residues. But increasingly we've had to think about our new markets in Asia and also in North America, expansion into those markets, where there is less focus perhaps on the residues, but pest control is absolutely critical. In terms of uh, insecticides and the insecticide residues now on, on New Zealand apples, the lowest in the world, bar none. 70% uh, of the apples that leave New Zealand have no insecticide, no detectable insecticide residues present on them at all. And this is to do with the increasing adoption of, of mating disruption, but the whole approach towards residue minimisation under what we call the Apple Futures program in the apple industry. We need to control codling moth and then there are several species of leaf rollers that we also need to control. So with the development of a comprehensive approach to mating disruption where we're not disrupting just one species but several species, we can reduce the whole residue profile, all of our insecticides, down to a new and much lower level. What we're looking at here is uh, codling moth. What we've got is the pheromone in the lure. This is the female sex pheromone incorporated into this lure and it's simulating the calling of a, a, a female moth. So on here, all of these are, will be male moths. So we're using this in the first instance as a monitoring system to detect the presence of codling moth to know how to respond. When we go into mating disruption though, and we put the pheromone out in a dispenser form, then all of a sudden, these pheromone traps shut down because the moths can't detect anything in a sea of pheromone. This is the disruption dispenser in itself. What we've got is a hollow tube here, and it's filled with the pheromone content for the three New Zealand leaf roller species on one side and uh, coddling moth on the other. Now, this is, these are quite uh, viscous uh, compounds that are in here, and they slowly leach through the plastic over a period of, of five months. There's a lot involved in the technology around the plastic, because what we're trying to keep is a constant discharge of pheromone throughout the season. We've been using the maiden disruption technology for five years in the Apollo orchards. We farm about 500 hectares on the Hiratonga Plains. Having all fruit for all markets, 
we, we need to be residue free and pest free for the, with the same fruit from the same block. So this helps incredibly for that, for our marketers to be able to sell to any market. It was a sustainable farming fund project and Plant and Food came to Apollo and wanted to use some infield work and we, we put 90 hectares of our orchards up originally, um, which worked really well. So we've expanded the program on our own after the project finished to 220, 230 hectares. We farm around a lot of houses and neighbourhoods. The less spraying, the better as a company, more environmentally friendly and all round benefits from that. We have an early season cost with putting the maiden disruption ties out, but over the season, the, the cost is comparable to spraying. It's the residue free status later in the season that is the huge benefit. I guess the future in terms of where we're looking at positioning pheromone systems and control with insect pheromones is an automatic dispensing systems. And we've got an example of one of those here that we've been working with uh, experimentally. Uh, this is uh, based on, uh, I guess, the RoboCan type concept. We've got a timer in the system to turn the pheromone delivery off and on when the mating behaviour is taking place. So it's very efficient in its use of pheromone, but the most important point is, whereas, we only, whereas previously we had to put uh, perhaps 800 of these out per hectare, this offers a control system potentially as low as two to three units, puffer units per hectare. Under this uh, sort of technology, we'd be looking at separate units, one for the leaf rollers, collectively, and then one for coddling moth. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.